The global payments landscape is ever-changing and all major banking nations are being driven to innovate. A recent paper published by Payments New Zealand looks at how these global changes and trends are likely to impact the New Zealand payments ecosystem in the near future. Well, for more on this, we're joined by Steve Wiggins. Steve is the Chief Executive of Payments NZ. He's going to tell us more, aren't you? Yes, <laughs> First of all, welcome to Cyborg <laughs> Television. But look, there are much. plenty of trends that have been impacting payments globally and, of course, in NZ in, in, this, in 2019. But look, are these trends new or are they simply a confirmation of what was already in place? A bit of both. I mean, some of them have been continuing, so there's still more speed wanted, more mobility, more information, those sorts of things. One, one of the ones that have heightened is around safety and security. You know, that's becoming really important for both regulators, consumers, and, and us as payment associations. The other one, too, that's um, coming into it is that payments have just become integrated into our lives, almost invisible, you know, like Amazon uh, checkout, those sorts of things. We've got a petrol station in New Zealand where you simply drive up, fill up, drive out, they get all of the information off your number plate, integrate that with how you want to pay, and away you go. So it's just becoming invisible. So that being the main changes. So what's driving these changes? What's behind it? Um, big one is the digital life, you know, the one that we all love and embrace. Um, so that's really driving that in terms of that expectation of instantaneous and richer features and better customer experiences. Uh, the other one too is around obviously technology. Um, you know, devices are cheaper and more information rich uh, from that point of view. And of course, we all live in a global community. So that global consumer, when you're buying products online, it could be coming from anywhere. And so there's that whole globalization as well that's driving a lot of that change in expectation in the market. And you alluded to this earlier, it's the fact that everything is happening very, very quickly, yes. as a pickup in speed. And it's happening not just domestically, but also cross borders. So yes. do you see a convergence between the two? Yeah, I do. I see um, pretty strong convergence because from a consumer's point of view, their expectation would be the same for either a domestic payment or an international payment. So the issue is, and we had a conversation with some of our counterparties actually here at Cybos, is where is everyone at with real-time payments? Because if you're sending from a real-time and then you're going into a jurisdiction that's got the good old batch type payments, mm. it then starts to fall apart and the customer experience is not as good as it could be. So it needs to work at both ends for that to work and I think that's what the consumer is really looking for. Now, uh, New Zealand has, has long been at the forefront of, of innovation, uh, being an ideal place to test and, of course, deploy new technologies. What's, what's next for New Zealand, would you say, when it comes to, when it comes to payment? Well, first of all, I'll say long may that last uh, for a sec, but probably the most recent innovation is that um, at the end of May, we launched our API centre, and that was sort of the Kiwi version of open banking, which you've probably heard a bit about. So <laughs> we released... Um, two of our first version standards, which is around accessing account information and initiating a payment. And so that went live in May, and the market's now starting to work through and start to work together and make that happen. But also we've had a program of work in terms of reinventing our existing systems. So we're looking at speeding up, you know, how do we get a real-time experience for customers? How do we deliver more information with that payment? And also uh, solutions like request to pay, those sorts of things. So pretty full on, the industry is quite tight. And so one of the constraints in terms of from our jurisdiction's point of view, in terms of how quickly we can change, is literally industry capacity, you know, people. Mm. Um, and that's an issue that's facing a lot of payment jurisdictions is that the expertise is pretty thin and we need to figure out a way on how we actually bring more people through. Because payments are so cool, I just don't know why people aren't lining up saying, I want that job. But also as well, when you look at payments, we find that they're becoming increasingly open and inclusive. And I'm just fascinated to know what impact <laughs> that has on regulation, because there's always this battle, for want of a better term, between technology on the yep. one hand facilitating things and regulators either being able to keep up or actually be ahead of the technology. Absolutely. They've made life really challenging for themselves and from that point of view. So on one hand, wanting to open things up to make it more inclusive, more players in the market. On the other hand, hand wanting to make it more restrictive, particularly around uh, the use of data and, and customer data as well. So I think they've got some real challenges. One in terms of just that, that almost that conflict of that innovation and regulation. Two, they've got the whole data and privacy issues to deal with. Yet at the same time, they want to maintain financial stability and system resilience. So complicated job. Glad I haven't got it. <laughs> <laughs> Payments Association are now also under pressure. Uh, how can they remain relevant? 
Yeah, good point. Um, I think the main trick there is one of engagement, is actually engaging more with stakeholders that are just outside the core players within the payment system. And so go out to other interested parties that are interested in the payment. So we've um, got a membership program, for example. So organisations who are either big payers or have got an interest in where the system is going from their business point of view, they join. We have nice, deep and meaningful conversations about development of the system, and so they contribute to that direction from that point of view. So what's also leading to is, are we providing the right range of services to the market? Because at the end of the day, our job is to serve the industry because they are our customers. And so it's about engagement. Mm. The other challenge, of course, you've got, and you're not unique in this, are these security threats. So how do you strike that balance between a low-friction consumer experience and security? Mm. Tricky, because, of course, consumers want both. You know, they want low-friction, but they also want to make sure that it's safe and secure and their money goes through to the right place, or the data they've released is safe and secure as well. So that is becoming really challenging. I think the industry, it's incumbent on the industry to deliver solutions uh, for providers to make sure that it is uh, secure. So there's a lot of really good fraud solutions, detection solutions out there. So they, they are deployed. I think we'll see an increase in things like uh, behavioural biometrics. So they sort of can map the patterns of your behaviour to know that it is you doing that transaction. So I heard a beautiful phrase that was called hunting genuine. So knowing that it is you that is making that transaction because I've tested all this other behavioural stuff leading up to that payment and then tick, it verifies that as well. Mm. And the other big part of it is obviously digital ID for everyone to making sure that we've got a very broad digital ID framework uh, that people can verify and say who confirm they are who they yeah. say they are in a digital environment. That goes back to that living in a digital age piece. Mm. It's got to have the ID. As you say, it is a challenge. How does this affect the way, or how is it currently affecting the way payments are sent and received in New Zealand? Yeah, for us, I mean, we're definitely going to be impacted on the global uh, change that's happening and some of those global trends. So, yes, that will come into NZ. I don't think it'll be a lift and drop, though, because mm. what's really important for not just New Zealand but other jurisdictions is that you ensure that your system is fit for purpose for your jurisdiction and the citizens that live within your country. So what might suit one area is not necessarily the same for others. So we to sort of take a bit of a myopic view. We obviously look at the global trends, but then say, right, what's going what's to work for us? Uh, we're a special breed. You know, there's only four million of us, and uh, we do things a little bit differently, and we're going to win the World Cup. So... <laughs> It's, One thing at a time. It's only the start. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Stop jumping the gun. Let's see if we're going to leave it there. But thank you so much for joining us on Cyborgs TV, looking at that payment landscape and, of course, making predictions for the Rugby World Cup. That was Steve Wiggins, <laughs> who's the Chief Executive of Payments NZ. Thank, thank you for you joining much. us. Cheers.